Welcome back, folks, to another Game Hoarder production. We are now entering Spellcasting 201, the Sorcerer's Appliance. Written by Steve Moretzky. Google that guy and tell me he's not a pervert. We have a nice little credit and musical intro this time. a little rehash of the previous game. At the beginning of Ernie Eaglebeat's last adventure, he was hopelessly in love with the lovely and delectable Lola Tigerbelly. In a desperate attempt to win her affections, Ernie escaped the clutches of his evil stepfather, Joey Rottenwood, and ran away to enroll in Sorcerer University. Ernie quickly settled into academic and social life. His early attempts to master the subtle and delicate art of spellcasting were sometimes successful, and sometimes not. Ernie had far better luck with Hillary, the young, beautiful, and eager wife of doddering old Professor Otto Ticking Clock. In nice mode, their passionate evening ended with an extremely well-scrubbed pile of dinner dishes. And in naughty mode, y'all fucked. One day, Ernie woke to find the campus vandalized and deserted. The dying professor begged him to find the evil minions who abducted everyone and stole the mysteriously powerful sorcerer's appliance. Thus did Ernie begin a wild odyssey to the most exotic islands of Peloria, places such as the Island of Lost Souls, where Gaylord and 79 soulmates awaited liberation from the curse of the vindictive cobbler in the Island of Horny Women, where too much of a good thing could kill a man. Ernie's travels even took him to the Island of Gods, where he met Glockenspiel, God of Ugliness, and Ocarina, Goddess of Beauty. It was Ocarina who uttered the most seductive line in adventure gaming history, Ever make it with a goddess? Finally, the trail led Ernie to ancient Fort Blackwan, where he was stunned to discover the lovely and delectable chained up to Lola Tigerbelly. Lola agreed to help Ernie since it seemed an appropriate time to go shopping. Inappropriate. With Lola's help, Ernie entered the bowels of the fort and confronted the evil mastermind who had sacked SU and who was about to unleash the unknown powers of the sorcerer's appliance. The villain was none other than Ernie's evil stepfather, Joey Rottenwood. Hello, my name's Joey Rottenwood. Ernie discovered that Rottenwood wanted to destroy Sue because it was once expelled him for cheating. But Ernie put an end to Joey's scheme by burying him under several tons of whale shit. Even though Joey, Joey managed to sneak away, Ernie's heroics earned him the advanced placement in the spell casting 2 oh, one And now, Ernie, as you return to SU for your sophomore year, you learn that President Snowbunny is retired and that his successor, Auto Ticking Clock, has launched a major campus rebuilding program. But your mind is focused on the ordeal of every SU sophomore. Initiation week. Whoa, had to spit that out quick. This must be the last clip because it's letting me catch my breath. All right, loading. Calm before the storm. The senior asked the fraternity pledge, Did you follow my advice about kissing your girl when she least expects it? When, replied the pledge, applying ice to his black eye. I thought you said where. I can resist everything except temptation. I second that, Oscar Wilde. Good quote. The hoary mage peels down at you, his icy stare freezing your blood and raising shivers through your ice ill, Ill cloaked body. I have an errand, he booms, in that deep and frightening tone of his. And when I get back in two hours, I expect you to have my bathtub filled. He ascends the stairs toward the doorway, pausing at the top to add, And no funny stuff, or I'll get myself a new apprentice. All right, folks, here we are, back in graphic text adventure land where I have been residing over the past couple of weeks. 
Your master's laboratory is a large underground affair, its vast gloominess accentuated by its dark stone walls. Workbenches of dark wood, seemingly centuries old, are struck, stuck in the room's many alcoves and corners. The light of day, like a beacon of hope amongst this dreary drudgery, shines down from the doorway at the top of a long stone stairs. A bathtub squats near the bottom of the stairs. A dusty old spellbook is sitting on one of the workbenches. On the workbench, you see a small wooden bucket, a fruit slicer, and a banana. Saving. All right. Here we are again. All right. Well, let's see. We have a skull up there. Let's check it out. It is perhaps the skull of a former apprentice who didn't get his master's bathtub filled in time. I could sure use a bath myself. If your master, the sorcerer, found you taking a bath in his tub, there wouldn't be enough factories in all of Peloria to supply turn apprentice to newt spells fast enough. Interesting. Take all. Everything on the shelf seems to be protected by powerful magical barriers. You can't take the bathtub. But you take the spell book, the wooden bucket, the fruit slicer, and the banana. Examine lollipops. Suckers, the official lollipop of the Social's Guild. So tasty, it's almost magic. Let's check out the curios. The shelves are crammed with all sorts of magical bric-a-brac. P in tub. Piss and tub. Don't make sense to you. Makes perfectly sense to me after a long night of drinking. Let's see. Wear cloak. Oh. <laughs> naughty mode. Enjoy it while you've got it. Spellcasting 301 probably won't have a naughty mode. By then, the Renquist court will have banned such dangerously immoral fun. Need to make sure we save after naughty mode. We have the print spell. What's the print spell do? All right, the print spell apparently animates yellow fruit. So we can print a banana, I'm assuming. Oh, I kind of figured a little Fantasia sound was coming. The banana sprouts appendages and hops to an upright position. The banana snatches the bucket and heads off for the well. And music during the game. That's going to cause me to have to edit around that. All right. Spellbook. Banana and slicer. off for the well. Time passes. The banana appears, bounding down the stairs carrying a bucket filled to the brim with water. Um, I'm gonna eat the banana. The banana wiggles desperately in your grasp, but becomes motionless as soon as you begin peeling the skin off in long, narrow strips. Not bad. Got rid of that pesky banana and had a yummy treat to boot. With the snap, crackle, and pop of magical energy, a piece of banana peel regenerates into a full-sized banana. Complete with the bucket. Then another banana, and bucket appears. Then two more, in seconds you're surrounded by an army of bucket-laden bananas, each one as industrious and determined as the one you destroyed. The army of bananas moves past in a blur. Several more buckets are dumped into the bathtub. As the bananas with empty buckets speed up the stairs, the tub is now about one-tenth full of water. I 
wonder if they're gonna overflow the bathtub. That's the problem. Banana army. Looks like we can go northwest. We have a fruit slicer too. We could have used the fruit slicer to multiply the bananas as well. You've seen one fruit slicer, you've seen them all. A loud knocking sound resounds from the doorway at the top. The army of bananas moves past in a blur. Several more buckets are dumped into the bathtub. As the bananas with empty buckets speed up the stairs, the tub is now about two tenths full of water. This is a small fenced yard given over to the weeds and nettles. A doorway to the southeast leads into the gloomy interior of a stone hovel. A steep path leads up the hill toward a well. A package with neatly printed writing has been left next to the door. In a small wooden bucket you see water. The army of bananas moves past in a blur. Bananas with empty buckets race up the hill. And bananas with water-laden buckets vanish into the hovel. Let's check out what's in this package. You open the package to discover a foy spell. And a notice. Read notice. Dear Spell of the Month Club member, our engineers have discovered a slight problem with last month's spell, print. Involving a greater degree of permanence than is desirable for this type of spell. We recommend you avoid using the spell until you receive an upgrade from our laboratories. In the meantime, enjoy this month's Foy spell, Edwin Fire and Bladder, also known as Edwin Chlamydia. Director of Customer Services, and the buckets and bananas continue to race past us, filling the tub at an alarming rate. A finger of energy leaps from the spell box to your spell book, dazzling your eyes. When your vision returns to normal, you see that the spell box has vanished. More bananas. The tub is now about eight tenths filled with water. I want to see what happens if we let it overflow. <laughs> the tub is now overflowing all over the floor of the lab. The sorcerer returns and stares around his lab with a look that would melt bricks. Apprentice, you've meddled with my spells for the last time. He waves one arm and the life drains out of the bananas. He waves the other arm and the life drains out of you. The world dissolves around you. Simulation lab on the simulation chair. Whoa, trippy. A shiny plaque has been mounted on the wall. A hand-lettered sign hangs crookedly nearby. There are doorways leading northwest, west, and southwest. The monitoring professor enters the room. Wait a second while I reclaim the simulation spells. Okay, your grade is 40. That's abysmal. How'd you ever get promoted to sophomore? Hit the books, Beagle Beat. By the time the post-simulation dizziness is cleared, the professor has left. Well, that's not good enough for us. Reload, Banana Army! All right. We have the Foy spell. Let's see what that does. All right. Let's check out the globe light. The globe light is rather dated, decorative to the touch, and perhaps a relic of your master's younger, more bohemian days. Like a lava lamp? Like an actual globe light, like the uh, disco globe. 
tub's about nine tenths. The tub is just about full. Let's cast our foil spell. With the resounding slurp, the bananas vanish, and an eye bulgingly enormous banana daiquiri appears. Let's see if this works. Time passes. The sorcerer returns and stares around his lab with a look that would melt bricks. He seems surprised to see the bathtub filled and his expression softens a bit. Then he notices the huge daiquiri, and for the briefest moment he looks as though he's considering allowing himself to think about smiling. Apprentice, you may retire for the day, but rest well. Tomorrow you'll be filling my coal bin, and it holds a 200 year supply. The world dissolves around you. You're back in the simulation lab. Wait a second while I regain the stimulation spells. Okay, your grade is 100. Nice work, Yag Beater. By the time the post simulation business is clear, the professor has left. We have completed the simulation successfully. Grr. All right, now what? We're back in the real world. By the way, uh, these are high-res EGA graphics. The first and second Sorcerer games, spellcasting games, are EGA. They didn't go to BGA until uh, Spellcasting 301, which is the last in the series. Um, Legend made a ton of these games back in the day. Well, you know, not a ton, but quite a few. Uh, they all have this almost identical look where you have the graphic window in the upper right and then all these words in your inventory on the left, your directional compass. So I plan on visiting all of them at some point. They're uh, a lot of fun to play through and to relive. Obviously without taking the days and weeks and months it took back in the day to actually complete these because you did not have Google, you did not have GameFAQs. Uh, at best, you either had the hint book that you could get a hold of, if you could get your parents to buy it for you, or you could call the hint line, and then your parents would beat you with the broomstick when they saw the bill. Because it usually cost a few bucks per call, and that would just get you one answer. Oh, the good old hint line. The Sierra hint line, yes, yes. I definitely called the Sierra and the LucasArts hint line multiple times. <laughs> That's quite fun to think back on. All right, so let's see. Let's go west. Westicle. Good old Melting Wolf Lobby. It looks a little bit better. They did, did a little bit of remake on it, you know, added some graphics. Now, EGA is a, a 16 color palette that they can use. Uh, once we go to VGA in the next game and go up to the 256 color palette, you will notice quite a considerable difference in graphics. Um, but for high res EGA, this was. Uh, Definitely some really cool screens that they came up with. A gloomy lobby, its carpet worn thin by the crisscrossing passes of legions of aspiring sorcerers, forms the heart of SU's oldest building. Arched openings lead southwest, northeast, and east. A wide stair ascends to the library, and doorways to the west and north lead outside. The lecture hall can be entered to the south. A tarnished plaque is mounted next to the entrance. A messenger nymph is suddenly fluttering in the air in front of your face. I had an important letter for you. But I didn't want to interrupt your simulation, so I left it in your room, in your fraternity. You blink, and the nymph is nowhere to be seen. Ernie's in a fraternity? What? Where's that? Um, let's go... Okay, so the directions in the, uh, out... The, uh, map has obviously changed here. Let's check it out. Yes, 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 yes. The school has changed a little bit. We are in the Yak Bladder Quad. What happened to Bat Guano Court? Large buildings form the four sides of this rectangular court. In addition, paths lead to the northwest and southwest. A gust of wind carries something into the quad. It seems to be a plan or blueprint of some kind. Get blueprint. Look at blueprint. 
It's a recent plan of the Sorcerer University Sewage Disposal System. Probably an artifact of last summer's SU expansion program. Assuming you haven't pirated this game, you'll find the Sewage Disposal System blueprint in your Spellcasting 201 package. Assuming you have pirated this game, you'd better rush out and buy a legal copy. Because you ain't gonna get nowhere without this blueprint, motherfucker. But now it is uh, 2019 and we can pull up the blueprint digitally. The tower clock chimes the hour. Bong! Bong, bong, bong! Pass me the bong! I'll have to dig up the blueprint if I can find it, but what I do have here is the Sorcerer University registration form that's been scanned and kept digitally with my uh, legacy game folder. Do not fold, spindle, or mutilate. Keep in a safe place. A fee of 15 gold pieces will be assessed to replace lost forms. For new students, welcome to Sorcerer University. If you're a returning student, please be aware that a major construction and renovation program is in process. We recommend that you use the weekend before classes to familiarize yourself with the new campus geography. Ernie Eagleby, status sophomore class of 41. ID number 9179 and living group is Hugh Delta Fault. Intended majors applied spellcasting. Medical checkup completed yes and health score 87. Special note to sophomores, truancy during freshman lectures reached unacceptable levels last year. While it may have been possible to skip an occasional class and still pass your freshman courses, we strongly recommend that this year you attend all class sessions. Scheduled for fall term, we need to take our intermediate techniques with Professor Waldo Wartitord, potions and power, powders and potions with Theodore Brandmuffin, financial aspects of sorcery with Judd Dogwizzle, concepts of transmutation with Bruce Hidden Muller, Beginning mood horn with cats who's and sat dawn. What the fuck? Cat who sing who sings at dawn, okay? And competitive jousting uh, held by the staff in the Sorcerer Stadium. And we have the cafeteria hours as well. The student union. Oh gosh. The D&D players have now changed to poker players or something. The main floor of the new union is composed of several study lounges, which, in the words of the building's architect, will provide a positive reinforcing space for students who will form into a context of mutually reinforcing study mechanisms and thus to ultimately develop and evolve into a life-shaping keystone of learning process. In fact, predictably, the lounge areas are being used for snacking, card games, and heated discussions about the prospects for this year's Pokeball team. Ample staircase lead in both directions. From the lower stairs comes the deep, rhythmic beat of loud music. The main doorway leads west, but a small doorway also lies to the north. Let's go down. Into the pub. Ah, the familiar sounds and smells of the horse and grub, the cozy pub that serves as the main on-campus hangout. Recently relocated from its old location in the lower level of the old student union, the pub is always filled from early in the day until the wee hours of the morning. A stair leads up to ground level. Next to the bar is a sleek jukebox. In one corner of the dirty floor is a heavy, rusted manhole cover. A small brown pellet is sitting on the bar. There's some very tiny lettering on it. Well, Let's get the pellet. Examine the pellet. Dehydrated rum. 199.997 proof. Another fine product from Dog-Eared Book Enterprises. Purveyor of institutional food services supplies since 749. Fighting. All right. What else do we got down here? Eyeglasses, jukebox, play jukebox. Ow! The jukebox is out of order. Examine my manhole. It's plugged with a heavy manhole cover. Open manhole. Open your manhole, Ernie. It's too heavy to lift. Frimp the manhole. The manhole cover floats gracefully into the midair, revealing an opening large enough to enter. Ha <laughs> ha, good old frimp. It's too dark to see. 
The score has just gone up by 10. You can activate and deactivate score change notification using the notify command. Clunk, sorry, but the manhole cover is pretty solid. In the darkness, you attempt casting from memory but stumble toward the end. You cringe, knowing the potentially devastating effects of miscasting. But other than a tingly feeling in your earlobes, there's no apparent effect. It's too dark to see much. You hear a distant flushing sound. A moment later, you are carried away on a tidal wave of raw sewage, depositing you in a random place. You squeeze into the tunnel, but it dead ends. It's too dark, and we are fucked. You warp back out of the manhole cover. Let's keep exploring. We need to check out all these new places here. Ooh, the janitor's closet. It's a small room with an exit to the south. A small shelf for holding cleaning supplies is attached to one wall. Mounted on the wall below the shelf is a glass case with some writing on it. On the shelf, you see a how-to book. In the glass case, you see a whoosh spell box. The case has been labeled with red letters. In case of oily mess, break glass. You take the how-to book from the spell, or from the shelf. Read how-to how book, not hot-to book. As you open the book, a coupon flutters out. The book seems, uh, rather dry. For those of you who played Spellcasting 101, rest assured that this book that you will have absolutely no trouble putting down. Ah. However, using your best study skills, you plow through it, and by the time you get to the end, you feel confident that you could fix a washer, build a municipal reservoir, or anything in between. Pain in the ass. That was boring. Read coupon. Three sheets to the wind plumbing supply. Barfton Road, near Parmade U. Introductory offer. One free plumbing tool with this coupon. No purchase necessary. Nice. Check out the music room. This facility is where the students are taking a music class. Come for their music lessons. This room is also where extracurricular groups come to practice. For example, the SU Orchestra, the SU Marching Band, and the SU Screaming Alien Punks. You see a manual and a mood horn. This is a copy of Beginning Mood Horn, a fact a new text by Miles Katz, who's Sing at Dawn. In fact, the very same beginning mood on text that comes inside each and every Spellcasting 201 package. And we can show you that real quick. The beginning mood horn, elementary mood horn compositions for the novice mood hornist. This is the document that comes with the box. And it kind of gives you the different notes. Shows you some different songs you can do. Pretty neat. That's it. All right. We got the manual. exploring. We're about to wrap up this episode here. Whoa! To the north of the main gates of Sorcerer U. Two small fraternity houses can be entered. Your own to the southwest and another to the west. A looming billboard faces the gate and a small sign hangs just next to the gate. To the south and east are large structures. The building to the east is topped with the school's trademark, Clock Tower. Atop the tower you can see an old statue of Marvin Belting Wolf. A tree-lined path leads southeast. Go ahead and save on latest. 
And that'll wrap it up for this episode of Spellcasting 201, folks. We'll see you soon.